Hey guys, welcome to episode number 418. Today is Wednesday, so it's DIY Wednesday. And I realize I'm a day late and a dollar short, but it's my birthday, so lay off me. I hope this uh, delay is worth it. What we are looking at here is an axolotl habitat. Now, as you guys know, I raised these axolotls from babies, from eggs and uh, now they're pretty good size. We'll take a look at them in a minute, but I also wanted to talk about the habitat that I've set up for them in the fish room. Now, originally I had them in small Rubbermaid tubs. They're actually the ones that are floating there. And after they hatched out of that, I put them in a 30 gallon uh, breeder aquarium and they outgrew that. So now they're going into this 50 gallon Rubbermaid stock tank. You've seen this stock tank in previous videos talked about it. It's a one-piece construction. There's no bulkhead. There's no leaking points on this. It's so sturdy. It doesn't even need to be uh, flat on the ground. You can fill it up however you'd like. And uh, this one actually isn't quite level. I might level it at some point, but I'm not too worried because this thing is like a tank. So the habitat, what is it? How did I set it up? And uh, then we'll take a look at the axolotls. Got the 50 gallon rubber made. We put a sheet of styrofoam underneath. That's uh, just to help support it. Um, then underneath that we have just some cinder blocks. And there's uh, two on the back. Actually, there's three on the back. One sort of supporting the middle, as you'll see there. And then uh, one on each corner. So we've got a total of five cinder blocks supporting this 50 gallon Rubbermaid. It's not drilled in any way. It's not plumbed into any other systems any other way. All we have is our sponge filter running right in the middle and eventually I do have plans to uh, add a drip line to this, maybe add a float switch um, which can pump uh, wastewater into my wastewater line right over here at a future point. But for right now, this is a separate body of water in this fish room. There's no heater in this um, stock tank because axolotls actually like it a little bit cooler than your normal tropical aquarium. So it's warm enough in this room that uh, the tank water will stay warm enough even without a heater. Now, um, what do we have in this tank? Like I said, we've got the sponge filter. We've also got um, these plastic boxwood garland plants talked about those in previous videos. These are actually really good for breeding uh, your guppies, your live bearers, because it gives uh, plenty of places for those to uh, those fry to hide. It's also good in a setup like this, because once these guys get to breeding size, they're gonna want a place to lay their eggs, attach their eggs to, and uh, this will make a great sort of uh, habitat for those eggs to attach to. It'll also be easy to strip those eggs off of these plastic plants uh, when the time comes. The only other thing I have in here are a couple pieces of Malaysian driftwood. And uh, they're pretty big pieces. And I tried to pick pieces that have sort of cave-like structures, sort of a concave-like structure, so that when I place that flat on the bottom of the stock tank, it creates a little hidey place, um, you know, a little, a little cave-like place uh, out of the sunlight, that uh, those axolotls can hide if they feel like they're a little too exposed. And that's it. We have no substrate, we have no gravel, we have no sand. Uh, as you may or may not know, axolotls, when they eat, they basically inhale all of the water around them and uh, they can get compacted if there's any sort of substrate involved. So uh, the texture on the bottom of these stock tanks is uh, just good enough that they can sort of uh, grab onto that and, and walk around. Uh, obviously, they can sort of swim around with their tail. Now, the axolotls themselves. I started with a 100 eggs, and they came from two clutches. We had an albino clutch, and there's two axolotls left out of that clutch. And then the other clutch was a normal clutch, and we actually have three left out of that clutch. What happened to the rest, you might ask? They all ate each other. Um, axolotls have a voracious appetite, and uh, the thing that you know fits in their mouth is the thing that they eat. And when they're kept all together, that often means it's their brothers and sisters 
that they're eating. Now these guys aren't particularly 100% healthy either. I believe that guy is missing a foot because one of his brothers or sisters ate his foot. Um, luckily, these guys are really good at regenerating limbs, so that will grow back over time. And then if you see this little guy over here, he got his tail nipped off. And again, that's an injury that happened about a week ago, and uh, he will regrow that tail as well. So, as long as they have a large enough habitat, as long as they have enough hiding places, as long as they can get away from each other, they will do fine. Um, the larger they get, the less they tend to try to eat each other, but as you just saw there, they will still try to nip at each other. Especially when there's food in the water, they get into sort of a feeding frenzy mode, and they'll just uh, chomp at whatever's in front of them. It doesn't matter if it's food or uh, another axolotl. So, word to the wise, if you're raising axolotls, if you're breeding axolotls, separate them as soon as they start growing legs because that's when they start hunting each other. And uh, it takes quite a bit of space to separate um, just one clutch of eggs, so good luck on that. Uh, it's definitely a big task. I have these guys floating in these bins right now because uh, I'm just trying to temperature acclimate them here before I put them in their new home. Uh, you will see I do have some uh, fish in here. I just have a few endlers swimming around. Again, I hope that sort of adds another um, distraction element to this tank so that they're more likely to try to attack the fish than they are each other. Uh, a lot of people will say don't put fish in with axolotls because the fish can actually nip at the axolotl's gills. So I will be watching out for that. But endlers are extremely peaceful. They stay really small. And if I was to guess, I would say if they got anywhere close to these guys, these guys would probably just eat them whole. So uh, I'm not too, too worried about that, but I will keep an eye on it. So anyways, guys, this is the axolotl habitat. It's a little low to the ground, but I didn't want it to uh, sort of interfere with my aquarium system. So here it is. It's sort of nestled in between my aquarium rack and my turtle system. And in the future, I will be working on sort of a, a fry breeding rack which may go up here and uh, I may introduce some sort of drip line into that to feed the turtle tank and maybe also feed the axolotl tank. So anyways guys, hope you enjoyed the quick walkthrough and the update on the axolotls. Hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys later.